Subscribe to join us and our travels as we share our life on the sea. It's battery electrical install time. We have new batteries. We have 800 amp hours of Dakota lithium batteries. And we have a lot of Victron components to tie that all together for our boat. We have a space in the engine room which is about 41 inches by 41, give or take, with a few little nooks and crannies here and there. So what I've done, and what I intend to do, is lay out all of the Victron components I have. So I've laid out some masking tape on the floor, which is roughly 41 inches by 41 inches. And I'm gonna lay out what I think, obviously things will change a little bit, roughly what I think I'm gonna do. And that's my space I've got to work with, so it's gonna be easier laying it all out here i can see how my wire is going to bend i can see how the componentry is going to sit the spaces and gaps between everything so i'm going to do that first up let's get into it all right guys i'm going to start with my first component but before i do um once again thank you to everyone that contributed to any of the victron gear that we had up on amazon it's we are so grateful and it's been so helpful also the gofundme so anything that wasn't actually um purchased on the amazon list we've used the gofundme to purchase the remaining parts missing pieces of the puzzle i do have an 800 amp hour lithium bank and pretty much the lithium bank is going to come into our first component which is our power in we might just place that one there it's rough i'm going to make it short and sweet and things are going to change we've got a link shunt which is here which will pretty much monitor what goes in and out of our battery bank and here is our distribution and that's where everything will be fed in so and our loads will be taken from uh, we'll go more into it on the install this is just a rough what i intend to do is just put this together roughly so i've got a bit of an idea on how this is actually going to come together in the engine bay so let's get going we have our controllers which will probably run down one side we are missing one so i'll use the box we get the gist of it two three four so we've installed uh, three big solar panels on top so one two three uh, we have 450 watt solar panels so they'll each have their own um, dedicated MPPT controller and we have one remaining controller which was for the two panels that were on the boat when we purchased it so all up we'll have four controllers have some fuses we will individually fuse each solar regulator we don't have our multi plus but we are putting a multi plus which is a inverter charger so that will go there that's on order we're still waiting for that beside that there's an existing inverter on the boat so ideally we would have liked to have put two inverters in um, but we did have a budget to work to and we're going to utilize uh, the inverter that's on the boat so this is a pure sine wave inverter which is a 3000 watt this one is a 5000 watt but it's a square wave inverter so not so good for the electrical components of computers and so on so what we intend to do is dedicate this inverter purely for our water maker and we'll leave this one for our house distribution and all of our computers and all of our fancy stuff that we don't want to destroy which is a pure sine wave inverter so i have 3000 watt there multi plus inverter charger and a 5000 watt standard inverter which is purely only going to be for the water maker which we'll throw in somewhere maybe they might even go this way orientation of things will vary oops forgot one bit there's our little controller that'll be mounted in our that'll be mounted opposite the galley there where our main switch panel is it talks and communicates without everything there all the victron gear and lets us know what's going in what's going out so we can manage our energy needs we are going a dc to dc charger just for the time being until we build the kitty up and we'll put a, a larger balmar high output alternator probably with a, a wake speed 500 regulator and that'll give us a little bit more when we're running the engine but for now we're just going to stick with the DC to DC. And that's basically it. And obviously we'll chop and change a few things. And the whole configuration here might slightly vary just depending on how the wiring goes 
and our good friend Brian he's drawing all this up on the computer and I'll have a quick look at the computer again and see what we're working with here so Brian's one of our patrons and Angela has been really helpful I'm going to show you what he's um, done for us he's actually got some pretty cool software that uh, you can design pretty much all your electrical system with I'm going to get Brian to give you a quick little rundown on it because I don't have it on my computer it's on his computer I haven't even downloaded the software on mine yet but I'm going to all right everybody this is Brian our patron, our friend, How you is doing? helping us today. Oh, he's been helping us all week. Yeah. <laughs> but you go, I want to explain to everybody what's on your screen there. Sure. So um, it's a really cool program that uh, I use for uh, doing circuit design. It's called KiCad. And uh, we basically are using it to lay out the new uh, charging system and power distribution system for Catalpa. And so we can start down here and we have the, sol the four sets of solar panels here represented. Each panel is going to have its own two-pole disconnect switch. It's actually a small breaker. And then each panel, uh, because these are 480 watt panels, I believe, yeah. Yeah, they're going to go into their own respective uh, Victron and PPT uh, charge controller. So the wiring is going to come into the PV port and then the output which is going to go to the battery will flow into these buses and then we have a single uh, input um, into the bus so that we can charge all the batteries, these are the batteries here, through the uh, Lynx power in device and then there's the shunt here in the middle that will monitor all the current flowing in and out of the batteries from the uh, either the solar panels or the uh, inverter or the alternator and over here we're showing the alternator going through a, uh, a regulator we have an isolator here to provide power to the engine battery and also provide power that's going to go and help charge up the batteries and we have these beautiful uh, Dakota lithium batteries too I'm sure you guys will talk about um, and then we have two inverters. There was an existing five kilowatt inverter on board that we're going to reuse. And that inverter is going to run the uh, water maker, which uh, should be here soon. Brand new water yes, maker. Super yeah, super exciting. That's awesome. And then we have a new uh, Victron Multi Plus 2 inverter that's coming. That was ordered yesterday. So we're going to have those two inverters. The... Uh, Victron uh, Multi Plus 2, that'll provide the uh, AC power for the boat, but uh, also we'll be able to bring in shore power through it, and it will also provide uh, charging power to the, the batteries as well. And then uh, we're going to take a circuit off of the, uh, the, the, the uh, DC buses here. We have two 650 amp uh, bus bars, and we're going to take uh, power off of that and through a switch to a DC panel that was existing on the boat and uh, so that'll power up all of the 12 volt circuits and then over here we have the uh, the servo the Victron servo GX it's kind of like the brain that's the uh, data hub for the entire Victron network so it will have a, a connection to a new uh, Victron GX Touch. That'll be the touch screen that we can monitor everything that's going on in the boat. So right now I'm just kind of reading through the documentation, figuring out what all the connections have to be, and uh, fine-tuning the drawing so that they have a nice cool drawing, and then eventually uh, Lee is going to label all the wires, and those wire labels will match up with what's on the drawing so that it'll be real easy for him to troubleshoot any problems in the future and hopefully if we design it right there won't be any problems that's amazing yes yeah yeah thank yeah. you so much for your help yeah you're welcome it's incredible it's been, it's been a joy that's about it so that's what it looks like in my head on the computer and on the floor for now let's see what it looks like in the engine bay this is the wall <laughs> this is the space let's get this wall underway He's got some on the ground and he's just contemplating 
Where to start? Where to start and where to stop. <laughs> Crunch time, things are getting mounted, things are getting on. Oh, it's exciting. You know. Well, this is what the wall looks like now, so far. Okay, so I'm just gonna go down and check on uh, how the wires are going over here. Uh, Paul's offered to um, make up our battery cables. I took a measurement this morning with Brian and um, yeah, we'll uh, go and check in. This is uh, Paul's boat in the background. And uh, he's the man that's doing our cables for us. Let's go have a look. So let's come to have a quick look at what's going on over here, Paul. Look at this, hey? Ah, oh, that's, that's quality right there. Is that what you like? That's it. Bloody beautiful. I was going to bring it over and show it to you. Just make sure we're no, going to do them all good. That looks perfect. No, that's nice. What a bloody legend. They're looking good. So that's all our battery terminals. And he's actually offered to do a couple up for our inverter. So yeah, there are a couple of... They were two watt cables. The other inverter ones will be four. So sweet. We're getting somewhere. We also got these, Paul has been helping us today with making up cables, so this is very exciting because there's a lot of componentry to go with everything, and it will all come together soon. <laughs> Soonish. <laughs> but that's what's happening. I'm making bolognese. The kitchen's an absolute mess. Smells <laughs> delicious. the wires from the solar panels to the batteries or to wherever the ones need to go. That's it. So I've just drilled a little hole that's going to run our wires up to our solar panels um, into the boat. So we've got that there that's ready to uh, get our wire sizing right and um, we'll take the wires from the two solar panels up here and we'll bring them down and it's quite a large um, rubber grommet in that seal so if we do need to add lighting at a later date it's going to be easy just to pop another hole in that so we can bring another wire out for lighting but for now that's our energy needs met for the solar coming in through that hole wasn't sure what we we're going to get there uh, whether it was going to be core or not but it's just solid glass it's about inch and a half thick of solid glass so that should be pretty good seal that up and we don't have to worry about any uh, water ingress there okay we're just pulling uh, wires through for the solar panels uh, Bella's in the back lazarette and uh, there she is there Bella okay so we've come through the davits into the back lazarette we're gonna come under our aft bed we're gonna move forward and we're going to come up through the engine bay and we're going to meet the controller with the end of this. So, and that will be all uh, all of our panels back into the control room ready to be hooked up to our charge controllers. So we're missing one of, but we have three. So we have enough to get started with. So let's get these cables through. I'm just going to check the back and we're going to slide as much as we can through just to gain another foot or so. I'll just get what I need. Stop. I'll help you. <laughs> Bella's stuck. She's trying to find where Lee's putting the food. <laughs> <You> good? <laughs> Contortionists right there. Night shift started. All right, guys. So I'm just drilling some holes here. We've got our lithium bank behind. 800 amp hours of and the run is nice and short so we don't get any voltage drop there we've got some good heavy duty cables coming up here 
and uh, we're gonna connect into the start of our uh, Lynx bus bar. All right guys, so we've drilled our holes and it's a little bit rough on the inside. Uh, I'm not too concerned, but I'm gonna use a little bit of three quarter inch tubing that I had left over. I'm gonna slide these in the hole, Ugh, that in there. And then my cables that run to my battery are gonna slide through there Boat's going to get a little bit of vibration with the engine running, so... And that's just a little bit of protection, guys. Dakota lithium 200 amp hour batteries. Uh, this is going to be an absolute game changer for us. We've spent many years on the water and we've had lead acid batteries. We've heard all the stories of people that have converted to lithium. Um, we've been a little bit limited in the past with power and it's always been a massive issue worrying about lead acid batteries. For us, you start dropping your batteries below 50%, start running them even lower because you've had a few rainy days and you're just destroying them as opposed to lithium that can actually take a lot more abuse than uh, lead acid. We feel this is a huge upgrade on what we've been used to. Um, like I say, in another few months we'll give a bit of a um, review on how they've been working out for us. Um, we're very power hungry. We run water makers, we run multiple computers, multiple electronic devices. So over the next coming months we're going to give these lithiums a good going over and uh, let you guys know how it works out for us. Uh, 800 amp hours of lithium, we've got nearly two um, kilowatts of solar to back that up. At this stage we don't have a high output Belmar alternator um, but for now we'll pretty much be solar and battery so we'll see how that goes for us. You like what you see next to me and you want to see these bad boys installed next episode? Like, subscribe and if you want a uh, notification hit the little bell up the top there and we'll let you know when these bad boys are going in. Till next time, take it easy guys. See you then. Cheers.